Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to replace the belt on your Tascam 688. And uh, real quick, I also want to touch on a, uh, a problem that I had that I thought was the belt, but it actually turned out to be uh, the little tab seeking arms on the transport. So I'll get to, I'll get to that in a second. But basically, uh, if you're having a problem where you go into playback or fast forward or reverse, and then suddenly the transport just stops, uh, you may have uh, some dirty contacts that those little lifter arms are attached to. Uh, in my case, uh, this unit was basically uh, thinking that I didn't have a tape in there after a certain point after uh, playing the tape. So I would play it, and then that little arm would get out of sync, uh, and there's some dirt in there. And then it would go, oh, there's no more tape in here, let's turn it off. So anyway, <clears throat> let me show you how to get in here. So first of all, you're going to have to take off this piece right here, uh, this little side piece. There's one screw right there, and another screw right there. So you take that off, and there's these little metal clips like that that slot into the side here. Uh, you got to wrestle with it a little bit, so I'm not going to show that on video. Uh, basically, you have to lift up the unit to pop the actual tabs out. But you take two screws out, get that off. Next, you got to get this wrist piece off. So this piece uh, has one screw about right here, one screw about right here, and then just slides off. So again, we've got our holes for our screws. So you stick a screwdriver through this hole, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of space where... Uh, this is where the screw actually terminates into. <clears throat> so you're going to reach through this hole down into this little slot where there'll be a screw. And you want to try to drop that screw out of this hole. Otherwise, it could get stuck in inside this area. And that's kind of a pain in the ass. So anyway, take those two screws out, slide this guy off, put it aside. Now, uh, next we've got one, two three screws. This piece is a separate unit than this piece, this entire piece over here. We're trying to take off this whole panel. Uh, up here, you got one screw right there, and it's hard to see, but there's a screw right there as well. So you take all those out, I can get that out of the way. Okay, so next part, we go in here. If you can see, I've taken these out already, but right here and right there, we have two screws. And those screws are interesting because they actually are what keeps the transport somewhat stable in the system. So the transport itself is attached to the bottom of the chassis on the inside, but it's very loose. It slides around. It's simply ba just mounted on the most basic level. Up here is where this thing actually gets locked into place. And then these outside screws on this plastic panel are what are just really holding your transport in place. So that's important to note if you're having some vibration issues or something like that, or your transport doesn't seem to be lined up properly with this, this area or something like that. Uh, anyway, so now we're going to take this, we're going to lift up, we're going to pull out gently. It should, should kind of come out like that. See so yeah, we're just setting on, rested on top right there. Then we're going to take this and lift it up and over like that and I just set it on a uh, pack of nails and uh, hangers and stuff right there just to keep it situated so then as you can see this would normally be tucked under this little potentiometer right there I already untucked that I've been in here uh, working quite a bit uh, so I would take this little wire header out if I were you makes things a lot easier uh, then also this one right here, you might want to take out. And if we're messing with the uh, transport, you want to take this one out too. So just gently try to pop these out without pulling the, uh, the actual crimps out of the connector. Uh, I'm going to pause it. This one's kind of a bitch. All right, so I took this one out. You definitely want to be careful taking these out. I just needed two hands to do that real quick. Um, and we've also got these little wire uh, tie things uh, that help keep the wires nice and tidy but we don't want them that tidy right now we want them kind of loose so you can 
un you know, lift some of these up to help move this out of the way, kind of like that, so you got more room to work. So uh, also, this one right here is also connected to the transport, and we can take that out. Actually, I'll just leave that in. It's not that important. Uh, lastly, to take the transport out, we've got this little wire right here I've already taken the screw out of. This goes on that hole right there, and you just pop a screw in there. It's just a little extra grounding for the transport. Okay, so now we've got the transport itself. Now, there's uh, a little plate back here. You can see that it sets on the bottom. There's another identical side over here. It's just harder to see, but it's down in there too. So on this side, you're going to have one screw right there in the middle. And it is this screw. Then on this side, you'll have one right there and one up top, which my hand's in the way, but it's, you know, up in this area. Don't fuck with this. That has something to do with, uh, you know, power or biasing or something. I would not fuck with it. Uh, that has nothing to do with the mounting or anything. So don't worry about that. Take out one screw here, here, and here. Okay? So now, I've already done this. So I can lift this transport out and slide it out. Ooh. Lose our panel here. Sorry about that. Okay. Basically, I want to take this transport from here. Sorry, I keep moving you around. I'm going to flip it up like that. So here's the bottom of the transport. It was sitting like this. I flipped it up like that. Okay? And we're not nice and loose because I've cut some of that slack off. So now we've got four screws up here. You want to take out, if you look close, this screw is in the plate below. This screw is in the plate below. These two screws right here and right here are what's actually on this bracket that we want to take off. So go ahead and take these off real quick. Okay, so you can see I've taken out this screw and this screw. And this little plate just pops off. And now we've got one here, one here, and also hard to see, one right there on a little post. It's holding this little bracket in. Now this bracket holds our capstan wheel and also our capstan motor. And, you know, we want to hook up our belt in between those two things. So, <clears throat> Give me one moment to take those screws off as well. Okay, so as you can see, there's a screw right there I've taken out. Then I've taken out that screw and that one right there. So now this whole assembly right here is free. So I'm not going to take this all the way out, but I'm going to give you an idea of how to put the belt on. So basically, let's see if I can do this without getting everything out of whack here. Okay, so the motor is actually mounted onto this arm. The capstan wheel is mounted onto that little bar on the left. So what we've got going on, we've got a little wheel right there. It's our little bearing, I guess, on the motor. And then here's our wheel. So what I would do, and what I already did, is uh, put it on the wheel first, then reach over, tuck it on the end of that little nylon wheel on the motor, and then gently Try to push it all back together in one piece. So, I am still good to go here. Yep, my belt's back on there and everything still. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that back on. Now, to actually put this back on here, let me tell you what I just did. So, I grabbed this piece with both hands, and if you look right there, there's actually a little tab right there and a little tab right there on this plate that pushes into this plate. So you lift it up, slot it into that plate, and try to get one of those screws in. Then you can get the other. And then down here, remember I said there was a little post, which I don't think you can really see. Yeah, you can kind of see it down there, way at the bottom. There's a little post under this capstan wheel that screws in right there. So do that one last after you've gotten these pulled up and slotted in. And then it's uh, nice and stable. So now, 
Oh, and keep keep note of the uh, screws up here. Uh, there's a hole right here where you can put a screw through, but it won't attach this plate properly. So uh, you need this one. Uh, so anyway, now we want to take this piece, this little bracket back, and uh, line that up over the two screws I just put in, and then we're going to put a screw in here, and uh, right there. Er, I'm sorry, that's not right. Right here, and right here. That's where we put our screws back in. So let's get that plate back on there. Okay, so I got that plate mounted back on there, and just for fun, let me show you this belt works properly. We are spinning. Probably can't tell very much that we're spinning, but uh, we're spinning properly. Nice and balanced. Belt's slotted in place. So, uh, yeah, new belt gets that wow and flutter back to normal. <clears throat> anyway, uh, while I was in there, I also put a little bit of Teflon uh, lubricant. Uh, on the back side of this little nylon bearing and then also there's a little bearing that slides off of the actual capstan on the wheel I put some Teflon grease on that as well uh, and then if you have this thing disassembled you've got the capstan wheel out uh, you can also go ahead uh, there's a bunch of nylon gears and there they may just be plastic but uh, there's a bunch of nylon gears in there uh, I applied white lithium grease to that uh, I'm not sure if Teflon works but I know uh, white lithium is supposed to work well for plastic and uh, nylon, things like that. Uh, prevents it, it doesn't eat it. So, anyway, that is uh, spinning away. Now, let me show you, uh, lastly, the problem I was having with the uh, little contact lifter pad dealios. So, let me get this back into position. Alright, so we've got our transport back in place. Now I can show you about these pesky little lifters. So, oh, I don't know what that was about. Uh, I guess that might have just been out of out of whack. Uh, I just <laughs> just jumped for a second there. Anyway, okay. So basically, let me grab a tape here. Obviously, Type Two works best in a uh, uh, poor studio because you got DVX and all that. They're designed around Type Two. But anyway, uh, let me go ahead and hit the play button if I can find it. Oh, that is not right. Uh, hold on. Alright, so my stupid ass forgot to hook my uh, connections back up. But anyway, hook up, you know, that, that if you took that out, that if you took that out, that, you probably took that out, otherwise, uh, I don't know how you got in here. Anyway. All right, as you can see, we're playing the tape right now. So, what's actually making this transport stay upward on the tape is these little feelers right here. So, what happens if I push down on them is uh, that the, well, I can't do it because the tape's in here and I, I fixed it. But what I used to be able to do was to push down on these lifters right here. See how they're just grabbing the, you know, the, little slots on the tape <clears throat> for right protection and type identification, whatever, uh, just to make sure there's a tape in there. So that is, uh, was dirty. When I would push down on these, uh, it would stop the tape, which meant uh, there was too much gunk in there that it thought the tape was barely, barely in there. So let me go ahead and, and stop it. Oops, and find the right thing. All right, let me take this out. Anyway, I can show you Oh, I need more hands. Let me, let me think here. <clears throat> Alright. Bear with me, I gotta flip the camera. Alright, I'm gonna hold these up. Alright. So we're playing, and I'm holding these up because it thinks there's a tape in there. If I let go, it drops the transport. So if you have a tape in there, and the transport drops like that, even though these are up, like, you know, they, they don't even move that much. Uh, let me turn this off real quick. I can try to show you where it is at, but uh, it's a little, a little difficult. But anyway, you look up top, see that little gap right there? 
where those lifters fit in. There, those lifters rock back, and there's contacts under little arms under uh, this little plate right here. So what you're going to want to do, if you're having the same problem I did, is hose that down with contact cleaner. And now when you play a tape, it'll w just work properly. And it, uh, you know, doesn't drop the transport. But anyway, that's pretty long video. Sorry about all that. Uh, kind of finicky to work on. Uh, just be careful with all these connections mainly is, is the real, real danger here. Other than that, it's basically just a tape deck. So, uh apply that logic there as, as you would. But anyway, uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, if you guys have questions, uh, ask me and I'll try to help you out. Anyway, thank you.